Hello and welcome to Gospel on the Go with Rachel for Sunday, the 7th of May. This is the fifth Sunday of Easter. Welcome. Um, is when you join us with Gospel on the Go, you are hearing the readings or the sermons and the prayers that are being offered in Dayspring Ministries, which is a, a collaboration of three Anglican churches in southeastern Alberta. St. Mary's Edgerton, St. Saviour's in Vermilion, and St. Thomas in, Wayne, in Wainwright. And we will begin our, our Gospel on the Go with our land acknowledgement. As an Easter people, we gather together recognizing that we are only temporal visitors on the land God has created. As a congregation, most of us are not Indigenous. Rather, we are of settler colonial ancestry, and we have benefited greatly from living on Turtle Island and with the first peoples of this part of God's creation. We know that we hold an important responsibility to acknowledge the grounds in which we are privileged to gather as we worship the Creator. In humility and gentleness, we acknowledge that we live on this Treaty 6 land that was first shared by Creator with the Cree, Nakota Sioux, Blackfoot, Dene, Sarsi, Salto, and Métis Nations. In light of this history and understanding of our role as Treaty people, may we de dedicate ourselves to moving forward in the spirit of partnership, collaboration, and reconciliation as we learn together and contemplate the possibilities that lay ahead. Uh, before we continue with the gospel, or the, the sorry, the call for the day, and the call for Dayspring Ministries and the, the, the gospel, I would like to pray, share with you um, two prayers: a prayer for our King and for the Commonwealth, as the um, the the British um, United Kingdom and all of the Commonwealth countries celebrated the coronation of King Charles III yesterday. And so I invite you to pray. Almighty God, fountain of all goodness, bless our sovereign Lord King Charles and all who are in authority under him, that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honor of your name and the good of your church and people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of all, by your providence we are bound with many peoples in the fellowship of a commonwealth of nations. Give us, we pray, such unity as may enable us to promote its pe the peace of your creation and the glory of its creator. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Amen. And we continue with um, the Collect for this Sunday. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another and walk in the ways of his commandments, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the prayer for Day Springs Ministries. Creator God, you have commissioned us to be bearers of light to your world. As you have given to us the Day Spring, who is Jesus Christ our Lord, so encourage us to share him with all whom we meet. Allow us the privilege and the responsibility to carry the light of your dayspring into the communities in which we live, work, and play, the communities you call us to serve. With your Holy Spirit's presence and guidance, may your work as Dayspring Ministries bring hope, peace, and joy to your world. In the name of the Dayspring, who is Jesus our Lord, we pray. Amen. Our Gospel today is taken from the... 14th chapter of John, verses 1 to 14. The Lord be with you, and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to him, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through, the, through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? 
Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This seems to be such a powerful promise, but at the same time, it seems so very easy. Ask anything in Jesus' name and he will do it. Wow, what a promise. Seems almost too good to be true, doesn't it? Ask anything in Jesus' name and presto, it's done. That seems to fit into the mindset of our culture these days. The other day I was at the local drugstore waiting for a prescription, so I was looking at their limited selection of books and novels. As I was glancing over the titles in the bestsellers section, I did a double take when I saw included a book by a pastor from Texas who has become quite the, the well-published author of so-called Christian spirituality books that promised just what our gospel speaks of today. Ask anything in Jesus' name and he will do it. I was gobsmacked, to say the least, that one of his books would find its way to the shelves of the store that only sells a limited number of books. Obviously, his message is very popular, or the drugstore wouldn't carry his work. But I was taken aback nonetheless. I must admit that I have intentionally limited my reading of this pastor's work because I cannot swallow his understanding of the gospel. It does not harmonize in any way, shape, or form with the gospel that I believe in. However, it is apparent that for millions of people worldwide, this particular slant on the gospel has become quite popular and is becoming, unfortunately, quite mainstream. This pastor unashamedly promotes a gospel of prosperity, in which if you only believe hard enough, ask your Father God in just the right way and claim the promise that if you ask anything in Jesus' name, it will be done, that your life will be rich and fulfilling and bountiful. He seems to promote the idea that Jesus is the key to all you are looking for. However, Jesus isn't the key. Jesus is the door. We live in a world that is rife with idolatry. We worship so many things, and Jesus tends to fall to the bottom of the list if he makes the countdown at all. Think about your week for a moment. When you wake up first thing in the morning, where does your mind go first? When you are driving down the road, what are you focusing on? When you choose what to watch on television or what book to read, what influences your choices? I know that my first thoughts in the morning are more along the line of, I don't want to walk on the treadmill this morning, rather than, thank you God for a brand new day. When I'm driving down the road, I am not noticing, the, as much as I should, the glory of God's nature all around me, but muttering more about Albertan driving techniques. When I sit down to watch TV or pick up a book to read, I am as apt to watch a drama or read a mystery because they're, they are tools that take me away from where I am right now, away from fatigue, away from worry, away from sorrow, away from whatever challenge is lying ahead. I'm more focused on the tools that I find before me than I am on the one who stands before me and offers me the way, the truth, and the life. After all, what is easier to pay attention to? the things that cause distraction, or the one who calls me to rise above the distractions. A few moments ago, I made a distinction between looking at Jesus as a key, as opposed to acknowledging Jesus as the door. While these two images are related, they are very different things altogether. A key is something that unlocks what has been set aside from us. 
We lock things away to keep people away from them. We lock the doors to our homes so that strangers cannot enter in. The key is just that first step in providing greater access. But even when we have the key, we are still on the outside of whatever was previously locked. A door, on the other hand, is the access. When we have access to the door, we are able, when we are ready, to simply go through it and enter into whatever lies behind it. To think of Jesus as a key is to think of him as simply a step forward toward where we want to be going. He provides the key, but we still have to push open that door. The emphasis is on us. If we think about our relationship with God in that way, then Jesus simply becomes a tool we have used to get where we want to end up. But that isn't the way of true faith. Jesus isn't simply a tool we use to get what we want. Jesus is the very door through which we are welcomed and encouraged to enter into what God wants for us and for our lives. I mentioned a few moments ago that we live in a world that is rife with idolatry. We really do. But there is something about idols that we need to keep in mind. In biblical times, when the stone carvers and carpenters were busy making idols out of stone and wood, they weren't doing so well in some kind of spiritual frenzy or haze. They knew exactly what they were doing. They were creating something with their own two hands, using the tools that they had at their disposal. There, there may indeed have been a few craftsmen who truly believed that what had, they created by their own hands was indeed a God worthy of their worship. But I imagine that there were more of them who were cognizant that these tokens and trinkets that they were making and selling were no more powerful than the stone or the tree from which they were originally hewn. Those craftsmen were caught up, as our age is today, in the idea that to sell something as truth, to make it seem important and powerful, is as important as the thing itself in the long run. With idols in this day and age and way back then, it is not the fact of the item that is idolized, really, but rather the idea that goes with the item. We don't worship money or cars or big houses in our world. We worship what we think they have come to stand for. We worship the idea. When we focus on the desire to have that which everyone else says is important, we continue to search for those ever elusive keys that will unlock the potential for riches and acknowledgement and security that our world idolizes. But the keys even if we do find them, don't open any locks that, are, that we actually find in our lives. We might have the key, but we can't find the lock. The problem lies in that which the theology of prosperity gurus have overlooked. The door that we are trying to unlock doesn't need a key. There is no lock on the door to the kingdom of God. There is simply a door that is waiting for us to lean up on, and as soon as we do, it opens. Jesus is that door. When we come face to face with the door to God's kingdom, we can be stymied, but only if we expect that, as that pastor from Texas reminds us, we have to do the right thing, ask the right question, lean on our own understanding and good works. When we finally remember that Jesus has told us to place our trust in him, to lean on him, then we find out that incredible truth that Jesus is most certainly not the key, the tool to get ourselves into heaven, but rather Jesus is the door that opens as soon as we lean upon him. Once we place our trust in him and stop expecting that we are the keepers of our own salvation, then we can we find that not only has the door been opened before us, but we are welcomed into our Father's house, in which we find that a place has already been prepared for us. Yes, Jesus does tell us that if in his name we ask for anything, he will do it. But first we need to acknowledge that Jesus is not simply a key that unlocks our access to what we desire, but rather he is the door through which we will find that which we have always really been searching for. When we shift our thoughts of Jesus from key to door, our perception and understanding of what we might want to ask for in Jesus' name changes drastically. We could ask that we might be given the riches of this world, or we could enter through the door and give thanks that we have been freely given the riches of God's world. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, there is so much noise and distraction around us that tells us what we have to look for is beyond you, out there in the world. We have to ask the right question, buy the right book, go to the right church, don't go to church. So many things instructing us on how to have that, that life we truly long for. When the truth is that you are inviting us just to sit down and recognize that what we are truly longing for, what we really do desire in our hearts and souls, is peace and hope. And that sense of security that comes at knowing we are safe. Safe in the arms of your love. As we discover who we are and what we are called to become, how you call us to serve in the world, as we learn how to sift through the chaff and figure out what is just noise, what is just extra, what is wrong, what is lies, help us to attune our ears that we might hear your truth. Help us, help us to really just sit down and recognize that we don't have to have some fancy key or some fancy plan to enter the kingdom of heaven. We simply need to want to. Help us to sit down, take a deep breath, and lean into Jesus. Feel his loving arms around us as we enter into your kingdom, of which we can only have such a tiny glimpse when we live in this world, but of which you will give us the complete view when our time has come to join you in the kingdom of God. Bless us and keep us as we, as we negotiate our way through the rat race that is the world, but that indeed can become a beautiful sojourn and journey as you walk with us through your Son, Jesus Christ. In his holy name we pray. Amen. As we bow our heads before the majesty and glory of God in the risen Jesus Christ, we remember the world, the Christian church, our siblings in Christ, ourselves. We remember the church in Wales and we pray for King Charles III. We pray for the Right Reverend Susan Bell Bishop, the Most Reverend Fred, sorry, the Most Reverend Fred Hiltz, Assistant Bishop, and the clergy and the people, sorry, the Most Reverend Fred, or Fred Colin Johnson, the Assistant Bishop, and the clergy and people of the Diocese of Niagara. We remember Bishop Sid Hagen and the people and rostered ministers of the Saskatchewan Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada. We pray for the Council of the North and the Indigenous Ministers of the Diocese of Saskatchewan. We pray for the Diocese of Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island, for the Right Reverend Sandra Fife Bishop, for clergy on leave of absence in the Diocese of Edmonton and the Interim Ministry Team. We pray for the Kabande Parish, Bouye Diocese, Alexis Nzoyisaba Rector, and for Whitefish Lake First Nation. We pray for our Day Springs partner parish of Bagombo in Bouye Diocese. For peace in the world, especially in Ukraine, Ethiopia, the Middle East, Sudan, and all war-torn and strife-ridden countries. For our families, communities, and friends. In our parish cycle of prayer, we remember Heather and Paul Dickey, Rod and Ruby McGinnett-Minnis, Jim and Linda Pugh, Lee Thompson. For those who have asked us for prayer, Ben and Gail, Doug and Maxine, Dawn, Giru, Hilda, Janiah, Leon, Maxine, Rob, Stephen, and all those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Remembering Dude. For all Canadian Armed Forces members, remembering those stationed and training at CFB Wainwright, and for all participating in Exercise Maple Resolve, for chaplaincy services, especially Padres Rob, Tony, Eduardo, Baloom, Bogus, and Dan. In joy and hope, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory, that our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection. I pray to you, Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, 
Lord of glory. He may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That by his power, wars and famine may cease through all the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying. That they may be comforted and strengthened. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people. That we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And a blessing for Easter. Because we're still in Easter season for a couple more weeks. May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and all those who you love and pray for on this beautiful day and forevermore. Amen. I'm trying to think if there's any announcements that are pertinent here. Um, tomorrow, oh, tomorrow is Padre Rob's birthday. So happy birthday to my husband, husband Rob, and um, I hope he has a good year. With his, his 53rd year kind of sucked. He got congestive heart failure and dude died. Let's make 54 a grand year, okay, God? Um, tomorrow at, at St. Saviour's from 1 to 2, I will be at the office for coffee and conversation if anybody would like to drop by. And we will continue with our book study in Edgerton at the library, um, chapter 13, for, um, from 5 to 6 p.m. Just a reminder for anybody watching from St. Thomas that there won't be a book study on Wednesday because... We will, I will be hosting um, Vermilion, the, Saint, the ministerial in Vermilion at St. Saviour's. And for St. Saviour's people, there will have, be a meeting at 10.30 of our ministerial at, in our parish hall. Um, and i got to go. Somebody's here. Have a great day and God bless. Bye-bye.